Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy, Tom. Got a quick video today that I really wanted to discuss with everybody because with the death of Internet Explorer, people are kind of freaking out a little bit. They're convinced that comms are going away, therefore, you know, Chrome doesn't use them. So they're like, oh, no, my scripts are all going to stop working. That is actually not true. And here is a little kind of brief history on why. This also a lot of help from Anonymous. I think it's 1189. So shout out to him for uh, talking through me with some of the stuff that I didn't know from back in the day. Um, hopefully I got his number right there at the end of him. So if he's watching and I got it wrong, sorry about that. But anywho, yes, Internet Explorer is being discontinued. So whether you delete it yourself, your company deletes it or tells you to stop using it, or you move to Windows 11, comms will still work even though the browser is gone or you're not allowed to use it the reason behind that is back all the way into windows 95 they decided to really base a lot of their operating system around uh what's known as the internet explorer core and that's kind of where you're doing all the com objects and stuff http http requests and whatnot so even in windows 11 the comms you're used to with Internet Explorer will actually remain. So even though you delete your browser, the IE core will still be around. If they were to get rid of that, so many things on your operating system, programs, whatnot, would just stop working. It would be so bad and just because so many things are built off HTML. So the good news is even though your browser is gone, the core of it is still there. So we're going to do a quick example showing you that. I do not have Internet Explorer currently installed on my computer. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at some code here. So I'm just going to do a basically an eBay grab, something simple, and do some math, show you different things you can do. So the first thing we're doing here for our document, um, we're doing URL to DOM. That's calling the function, which is down here. I'll explain a little bit about that later on, but it's basically jumping down there, getting whatever it needs, jumping back to the top. So I'm going to be using this eBay listing that I just randomly grabbed. Uh, this one's pretty long, as you see. Obviously, you could do something like a URL shortener, I'm sure. See, it's very, very long. My God, I didn't realize it was that long. Whoa, that's insane. Just make sure at the end you put that quotation and close it in parentheses. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty long one. I didn't even realize that when I grabbed it. But hey, whatever URL you're using, that's fine. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at that. So I just found, I just typed in book and got the first one, The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. Sounds like a good read. And what I want to do is I want to know what the current price is and how much it's shipping. So I want to know my total. That way, if you're watching a live action or auction, maybe you could have it, you know, a set timer going off every five minutes. Hey, the price is now this. Now the price is this, you know, et cetera. Or maybe have a threshold thing letting you know, hey, the thing you're watching is below this price. You should go buy it now just so you're not constantly having to open your browser, refresh it. You just have auto hockey watch it. And I've done videos where I say, like, how to make auto hotkeys text you. So you could even have it be like, oh, it dropped below this price or it went above this price. Texts you so you know, oh, I got to jump on my computer and, you know, take an action. So this one's $37 each. It's not an auction. You just buy it straight up. That's fine. And then the shipping is $3.99. So something to look at here real quick before I close this out is for the price, it does state that it is U.S. currency. It has a dollar sign in there and the dash EA. I'll show you why that's important now. All right, let's scroll all the way back to the beginning from that long URL. So you can do it by class name. Uh, we're just going to keep it simple with ID. Um, hopefully the website you're using has ID. That just tends to be easier, I think, personally. So we're going to grab the price. So we're doing document get element by ID. And then whatever that ID is, and we're going to grab that inner text. So if you don't know how to grab what the ID is here, I'll show you that. I guess I should have not closed that down. You're going to go to wherever it is, is the easiest way. So I'm just going to hover over this text. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to push inspect. 
It might take a second to load, but there we go. And it's going to be highlighted in blue there, as you see, so it's targeting. Just check that the content does say 37. That way you know you're actually looking at what you're supposed to be looking. And right there, it's pretty simple. ID equals, and then just double click. It'll automatically highlight, control C, and then control V back at your script. So that's how that is done. And oh, hold on, there we go. Um, now, like I was saying, it's important to know about that stuff. I need to clear that up because I'm going to be doing some math with it because I want to know the actual total. You know, I'm being lazy. I don't want to do the math myself. So I'm just doing a string replace. So I'm using price, just putting it right back into the variable price. And basically, see how this is blank? That's just saying delete the dash EA, delat, delete US, delete the dollar sign. I just need the pure number. And that's what that's going to do. Next thing we're doing is we're getting that shipping. All the same thing. It's just a different ID. Once again, do the same thing I showed you up there with the right click. And then for that, I'm clearing that up again, US and that. Obviously, it's not going to say EA, EA for that, so I don't need that line. I only need it up there for the price. This is all I need to clean the shipping number up. And then we're just doing a quick, simple math problem here. Price plus ship equals total. You know, what's my total? Then we're going to do a message box here. We're just That's just the type of message box and whatnot. Uh, eBay item is the title. And then we're just kind of doing some stuff here where we're saying price, you know, show that variable, do some line breaks. What's the shipping? Oh. Do that variable, line break, total, and then whatever the total comes out to the, from where we did that last line. And as you see, I'm just adding that dollar sign back in there because I just think it makes it look better. Once I was done the math, I, I, I want to see that dollar sign again. So there's different ways you can go about that too if you want. You can always also, if you don't want to use the website here, you can put a variable here and maybe on your first line have an input box and just call the variable here. That way if you're constantly changing it versus having to hard code the URL in, you can do that too. So there's a few options with this first line on how you want to grab that information. You could have it even say like grab like active window and grab the URL that way. So lots of options. I'm just hard coding it in because it's the simplest. I'm only caring about this one item to watch. So down here with the URL to DOM, um, basically what we're doing is we're doing a com object create. We're doing a HTTP request here, and we're just using version 5.1 of the com interface. Uh, a lot of this you're not really going to be messing around with. I just kind of briefly going over it. So here, you know, we're doing like the get URL, send the request. Uh, we're going to save it uh, base or use it as an HTML file, obviously. Uh, and then down here, don't let this confuse you. Uh, at first, it kind of confused me when I first saw this too. Uh, content equals IE to edge. Uh, let me see if I got that open here we go i'll link this in the description below it's uh, a great thing and this is what i got from anonymous uh, 1189 that really helps explain it so there's different options you can use so as you see i'm just using the first one ie equals edge i'm not going to go through all these but just the first one here it says you know edge mode tells internet explorer to display content in the highest mode available you can read more into this if you want to understand a little bit better if you don't really care and you just want your script to work, that is perfectly fine. Just leave all this as it is. So yeah, I mean, this I think is a great way to show you that, you know, even though Internet Explorer might be going away, that's just the browser part of it that's disappearing. The comms, as far as I can tell, are here to stay since they've already been on Windows 11. This script should work just fine in Windows 11. If you guys run into any issues or questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. Hopefully this guy is, gets you you know, really excited knowing that your scripts aren't just going to die because Internet Explorer is gone. Alright guys, I will see you on the next one. Hit that subscribe button. Two, three videos every week, mostly doing with auto hockeys. Bye! Bye!